Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today, including ancient migrations, ancient architecture, astrophysics, and planetary science. We're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find a silent last 24 hours on the sun. As sunspot maximum phase ramps up over the coming 36 months, there will be a lot of this on-off growing activity and then fading pattern that we have seen since November. The solar wind is kind of in that off mode now as well. Plasma stream continues maxing out within merely normal solar wind pressure range, leaving the geomagnetic conditions relatively calm and quiet for now. Quick weather alert for tonight. It's going to come fast and be over by the time most know what happened. This event at the convergence region between pressure cells is going to light up over Texas and Oklahoma. Wind, flash floods, tornadoes, hail and lightning, all possible in a very short stretch of time. Let's go to an interesting bit up next. What do you think when you think rainforest? Most of us think the tropics. In addition to the coolness of finding an insane amount of lichen species in Alaska's rainforest, it might hit your ear weirdly to hear that Alaska has a rainforest. In fact, as you see on the map here, there are tons of rainforests, and they do not all sit in the tropical regions. And yes, that includes the Alaskan rainforest. Interesting story up next about tracing human migrations in history based on where the water level was. Before the modern era, the Ice Age locked tons of water on land as snow and ice and dropped the sea levels considerably. There were likely much more simple and numerous migrations by comparison to what would have taken place even just a few hundred years ago, and interestingly some of the regions trace where some of those amazing ancient flood stories come into play. Folks, we're seeing another of Alma's confirmations of Sophia's key discovery to date, the control of plasma turbulence and magnetic fields over gravity in terms of star-forming clouds. Here, they're applying the new model and achieve a factor of five increase in fine structure identification and understanding compared to the previous models, and those who know electromagnetism will recognize the Z-pinch that forms the Taurus Jet Parker Spiral Disk at the central modulation point. I'll admit, while I love giving Sophia the captain's chair, since its discovery, it's been all Alma confirming. Probably because Sophia is busy doing other things. The infrared observatory on a plane was pointed at a star that flickered recently, but it wasn't a lucky serendipitous capture. They knew it was going to happen when Pluto passed in front of it, and they used Sophia to determine that the atmosphere of Pluto is not like what we thought. We know it was a cold, icy world with a tenuous exosphere, but it now appears the atmospheric content of the planet is constantly replenished and maybe more robust than we thought, which honestly has to make me think again about those Hubble images of Pluto years ago and the hazes seen by New Horizons. It's a different world atmospherically than most of us have imagined. Up next, folks, Gobekli Tepe, and this is very cool. While they know pieces of it were built over time, they say that around 11,500 years ago, they tried to build one massive structure comprising of three of the columns that still sit there today. Interestingly, they say the geometry and project itself represent a titanic change in their spiritual world and societal structure. Given that they peg it to right after the last iteration of Earth's catastrophe cycle, I think they may be right about that. And last but not least, Folks, this is also very cool. The legacy survey from Hubble keeps stacking images and finding new things, and in this case, they put an AI to work not only finding those hard-to-see objects, but classifying them as well. You can see how much is revealed with the false color AI labeling, but also where this might come in handy, especially because they have done it for the entire legacy survey up to this point. The link to the interactive map is on that article page, and I definitely got lost for a number of minutes last night just playing around with the thing. These characterizations are vitally needed since the key cosmic tattletale are going to be the galaxies we see in the heavens. Individual stars aren't going to help enough, and we're technologically short on the cosmic scale and the cosmic web, but the lost light of Hubble implicating larger circumgalactic media, their co-rotation with the galaxies, and the feeding of those galaxies with spiraling vortex helical currents of ionized gas from the cosmic web makes those galaxies poised to tell a more electromagnetic story than a mostly gravitational one. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. <laughs>